Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter, the 3rd verse. And that is the title of our program, Great and Mighty Things. On my left is the host, Reverend Bob Butler from Agape and Praise Fellowship in Letts, Iowa. And I am Reverend Kendall Hetrick from Last Adam Ministries, just we're about everywhere you can want to catch me. I don't know. Uh, but if you, if, you want to, if you want to send me something, send it to Post Office Box 253, Lomax, Illinois, and it'll get to me. Uh, and we are dealing with a series on a book that, that Bob has In the uh, process. Com compiled uh, <laughs> out of past teachings that he yes. has. And uh, and I have actually even learned some things as we've, we've gone through the, the several programs that we've dealt with here. I won't go into what yet, but... Uh, Anyway, I, I've learned some things there again, and and we we reiterate all of these things all of the time. I mean, we are we are constantly uh, we we talked in one of the other programs about meditating, and that, and, yes, and, and yes, part yes. of that meditating is is continually rehearsing things and saying Word, things. Yes. When you when you're trying to learn a line for a program, you just you repeat it and you repeat it until it be, it becomes second nature. We do the same thing uh, with. Uh, with particular verses of scripture, uh, um, you know, we 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 constantly quote them, and we we uh, especially there there are oh what fifteen or twenty that are ver that that we use all the time in 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 quoting and in praying that that we continually speak out. Uh, and uh, we're, we're, we're continually thinking about and meditating on them and, and tying them into other things. Uh, transitionatory justification. When I, I knew he was going to When I get into that. <laughs> well, I hadn't gotten this series yet, so yeah. uh, you know, uh, Repentance from dead works, faith toward God, the doctrine of baptism, laying on hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And, 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 and these are things, things that, we, that are, are, are key to our life and ministry that continually come up. And we're, we're always viewing everything through that, well, how does that tie to this? How does this tie? How does that work into this? How does uh, how does John fifteen uh, seven tie in with Matthew eleven twenty three? How do, how does that work? Which will go better? How will it better express what I'm trying to say? Uh, will it be a, if I start out with with Mark eleven twenty three, uh, or will it work better if I start out with uh, um, Galatians that by grace are you saved through faith mm -hmm. that not of yourselves it is a gift of God will it work better if I start there or if I start here uh, how is it going to minister and, and how does it flow and, and we're, uh, we're we're continually working on these things in our, in our lives all the time and yet still we have situations come up that uh, you know the sickness the disease the the, <laughs> the attacks the, of the, the devil the attacks <laughs> of the devil still come our way at, at least as much, if not more, than anyone else, but we're mm -hmm. we're ready to overcome by the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. You know, there again, because we we continually fill up our life uh, with the word, and, and and you know, I'm out in the tractor going down the down the field. I'm out in the semi going down the highway. I'm 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 listening to tapes, or I'm meditating on a must, or I'm I'm singing praises. You know, uh, especially when I'm out here by myself, man. I just just cut loose and but but the victory isn't always instantaneous and, and we live in a society where they want everything instantly well that's true when we go through when we go through things and mary and i have gone through some things within the last year that have been very trying very very uh the trial of your faith faith work of patience the word mm -hmm. says well we've had it tried and, and and you know a lot of people would have given up and quit and there's been times in that year and a half I would have considered that also. In fact, I've talked to people about it, but I can't quit. But what my point is this, we live in this instant society and, and just because you're getting into the word, just because you're quoting the word, just because you're believing the word, doesn't mean it's gonna happen instantly all the time. Sometimes it will happen instantly. We see instant healings sometimes. That, but you know, I've thought about that a lot too, but I think a lot of those instant healings that we see actually somebody had been praying ahead of time preparing that to happen that was behind the scenes that nobody really knew about so when that person was put in that situation where the word could come forth the good word the good seeds could come out that manifested mm -hmm. but that's not always the case sometimes uh, the trial of your faith work of patience sometimes there needs to be patience 
involved before that manifestation of victory happens. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes there's a healing process has to go along there also, uh, depending on what the circumstances are. So what you put in is what's going to come out, and that's the chapter we're in. Uh, so we got to be careful. And in fact, one of the first programs, we, we made the statement that you have to be careful of what you hear, what you watch, what you see. Uh, that's why they say pornography is so addictive, because once you see that vision of whatever it is, uh, it takes a while to burn that out. Mm -hmm. In fact, I had heard a psychiatrist the other day just make the comment that when you see something that you had not seen before, good, bad, or indifferent, it's in your mind. Now, they're using it from the soulish realm because she says it's in your mind and you can't get rid of it. Eventually, uh, it will be suppressed to the point where it's no longer prevalent. Not, you know, it doesn't come up all the time. But there could be a case down the road where uh, it shows up again. Well, that's from a psychiatrist's point of view. But from the Word of God, we need to, we need to overcome it with the Word of God so strong that it can't and don't want to come back. We don't want to meditate on it. We don't want to give it further place. Well, it, it comes back again into, and then again, back into tying into and reiterating, uh, because this, uh, the mind and the soul realm is where the battleground is. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the flesh is going to just follow along. It, it it's, it's not a, um, it, it doesn't really get to make a decision. It gets, it, it gets input just, into just things. Just yell at you. But it really doesn't. It doesn't. You know, uh, it doesn't really get to make a decision. It, it, it's our it's our soul realm where the decisions are made uh, hopefully by the the influence of our spirit and the word of god which which is working in our spirit but we we uh, we got to we, we we've got to allow our spirit to be big enough sensitive enough and full enough to be in control the way that it's supposed to be that's uh, that's it, absolutely true uh, our uh, you know most all of us have, uh, you know, we're all in the Midwest. We've we've driven on ice and snow, and you come to a place with a vehicle, uh, especially on ice and snow. Sometimes in rain, sometimes just on dry pavement, where where you're no longer in control of the vehicle. You're just along for the ride, <laughs> yeah. um, because we've gotten to going too fast for conditions. And the same thing happens if we're going too fast for spiritual conditions. You know, we talked about one of the other programs. We're trying to 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 get a uh, a ten cent, uh, a ten dollar prayer answered with ten cent faith, yep. and 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 it, we're it's beyond our ability, uh, or we can even pray prayers that are beyond God's ability to answer, um, because He can't violate His himself. word and He won't lie, and and so He can't do some things that we try to try to talk Him into. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, we 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 get ourselves into these situations where. Where our, our soul realm is is just in control and 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 it's just dragging us the the spiritual man the real us it's just we're along for the ride and 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 it takes something I mean we, we've got to get back in control of that to stop some you know sometimes you're out and there's not a there, there's not going to be a problem but a lot of times you're headed for a wreck mm -hmm. uh, and, and we're headed for a for a wreck in the natural if our spiritual man is not in control and not walking sensitive to the things of the Spirit of God. And, and here again, if we're sensitive to the Spirit of God, we'll understand a lot of times, as you were talking about, sometimes we see things happen instantly. Sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes we have to stand for um, a period of time. A, a, a period of time. Several periods of time. Uh, uh, Marilyn Hickey always made the statement that the last five minutes of our faith are the most important. <laughs> and you yeah. might have to go for years. Uh, praying for somebody's salvation, you may have to, you may pray for it for years until the word breaks down that 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 boundary because you sow the word and 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 it's on that hard stony ground and it, and you say, oh man, it's it's it's, I I, I got a situation that I always think of uh, with, with a group of people in a particular area and and you'll see them and 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 they'll, man they they'll, they'll, they'll get to going and they'll, they'll man they're, they're on fire and they're going and you think they're going to make it through this time and then and. And they they don't, <laughs> and the, and they end up right back. But in 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 that realm of, of manifestation, just a quick word, uh, it, it it may depend on how it comes. Uh, there are things, there are times and situations where we pray the prayer of faith, and, and we stand in faith. We 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 stand saying, "I believe that I receive that," 
and, and there are other times when we pray uh, when when we pray just hoping and uh, and that's all we've got going for us is hope and we never did get any faith tied into the thing to, to see it come into manifestation and and we tear it down uh, you know I, uh, Bob and I both prayed for, for people uh, maybe some of you have too you pray for people and, and you know that it's not going any farther than that because uh, they say pray for me and I, I'm, I'm, I've got this hangnail or headache you know <laughs> and yeah. What, whatever the particular thing is and, and so you, you lay hands on them and you, you pray for them you, you, you speak the word you, 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 you pray the, the thing that you that you need to, to, to do with and and immediately they begin to look into the natural realm and say well my head still hurts or my my, my nail still hung uh, I must not have got anything and and so so immediately they've got out of the, the the faith realm and got over into the feelings realm and the natural realm. Natural, yep. They're 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 basing what they have on what they see, on instead of on what God said. And uh, and we have to base what we're getting on what God said. God said it. That that's that's the end of it. Um, he, he says here he cannot lie. Well. If the situation that I'm in says something different than what he said, somebody's lying. <laughs> God can't. God can't. So, uh, so it's got to be the situation that's lying. Uh, <clears throat> well, the devil is the father of lies, and he can't tell you the truth. So <clears throat> that pretty well narrows the field right there. That's right. If he tries to make a deal with you, he's lying. Uh, that's just the way it works. We, we better get into our book here. Or we're, we're, well, we'll have I'm, our 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chapter 12 of Romans. I want to add this because it ties into what you've been talking about. He says, I beseech okay. you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. There's your flesh. A living sacrifice. We're supposed to sacrifice our flesh. We're not supposed to yield to it and, and treat it like a prima donna or something. <clears throat> sacrifice your flesh. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable worship or service. So when we sacrifice our flesh and say, no, flesh, I ain't going to pay attention to you today because I'm going for God. That's sacrificing your flesh. And he and be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, the renewing of our mind is the putting in the Word of God, and we put in the Word of God so that our spirit man and our soulish realm can act as unison to accomplish what God wants us to do in our life. And until our spirit man and our soulish realm work together we're not going to have the success that god wants us to have mm -hmm. and you do that by being not conformed to the world transformed by the renewing of your mind you may prove prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of god because when the word of god is in you you put it in it's going to come out and that's the perfect will of god mm -hmm. because when the word of god's coming out of you that's the same way jesus did jesus didn't say anything that the word he had opportunities all around him to confess what the world was doing but he never did mm -hmm. we do we boy that some catastrophe happened in the world we're we jump right on it man oh look the big wave that hit over there that's an example oh look at god he's getting all those people corrected god doesn't operate that way uh i think it caused a lot of things to happen and and a lot of word went in and a lot of other things went in and a lot of that stuff's going to come back out but okay where were we <laughs> um we were just after we better back up to the last this last group of people okay wherever you got your this last group of people well, that's right here the last group of people okay let me read there that's where i got it marked to start 12. <clears throat> this last group of people that jesus talks about back again we're dealing with the, the parable of the sower in mark the fourth chapter yep uh, and this last group of people that jesus talks about is a good group every christian should desire to be included in this group it should be the goal in every christian's life Jesus says in verse 20 of Mark chapter 4 that these are they which are sown on good ground. What is good ground? If you're a farmer and you have ground in the timber and also ground down by the river, which do you think is going to be your best ground? You would answer the ground down by the river, of course. That ground is black and rich and fertile. It will grow weeds six feet high if good seeds aren't planted in it. It's by the water, so it has all the moisture it needs. The trees in the hard clay timber soil have to put their roots way down to even fine water. Good ground, we all want to be good ground. These are they which are sown on good ground. What did it do? They heard the word, they received it. Now the other people that Jesus spoke about received it, but not the same way. 
and bring forth fruit, some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundredfold. Why are these people bringing forth fruit and the others not? The reason is that they did not they did not let Satan come in immediately and steal the word which was sown in their hearts. They didn't bend over with affliction and persecution rose for the word's sake. They didn't take on the cares of the world and get caught up in the deceitfulness of riches. They didn't allow the lust of other things to come in and steal the word that they had received. When somebody says to you, you sure sound like you have a cold, your response should be, no, I've been redeemed from the curse of the law. You're just hearing my flesh. There's a battle going on. The devil's trying to steal from me. When words come, What words come out of your mouth when there is something wrong with you? What is your response? Are you hearing the word? Are you feeding on the word? Is your faith up to the point where you can tell those people what the word of God says rather than what the world says or how you feel? Tell them what the word says instead of what the people of the world would say. Want to stop there? Oh, we can spend a half hour there real, real, real quick, I'm sure. <laughs> There's a lot of rich stuff there. Uh, but there again, basically, it's, it's reiterating. And re- right. You know, we, we've, we've talked about it already, that what we have going on in our life, we, we have to, uh, especially us, we have a responsibility to, to be good ground. That's right. And not to let the, the, the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things, as it said there. Uh, the, the message says, don't let what we're going to do and what we're, what, what we're after and the things that we're desiring, don't let those things come in and choke the word out. Don't, right. don't allow those, the, the things around about us to win. And, and so this is where, where we're at. You know, all of these other things will be trying to work. The world will be trying... Um, as I was ministering uh, here the other day, I was talking to, to the people, and I said, "Just we have spiritual influence on us constantly. Absolutely. Just as we have the, the influence of gravity on us constantly, if I pick up this pen uh, and drop it, gravity is there every time, consistently. It doesn't, doesn't change. I, I don't see gravity, and I, I see the effects of it, but uh, the same thing is true with what we call atmospheric pressure. I have what is it, 15 point some pounds of per square, uh, inch. Uh, per square inch of my body. So for every square inch, and i got several square inches, uh, I've got 15 <laughs> pounds, you know, for 100 square inches, you've got 100, uh, you know, 155 pounds. Or you've got, we, we've got to, we don't think about it all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't get up, I don't wake up in the morning and open one eye and say, oh, gravity's still working. <laughs> I still got, you know, but I have to overcome it to get out of bed, but I don't stop and say, well, I better overcome gravity here and get up and, and do all this thing. No, I go through my day not thinking about that. But we also have spiritual influences upon our body, spiritual pressure constantly upon us. The, the devil and everything else is around about there. Uh, remember uh, uh, Elijah's servant back in Second Kings? I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he, he got up and he went out for water. I'm going to have to hurry to get this in here. But uh, he, he went out and, and he saw that the army of the Syrians had surrounded the city. And he went running back and he said, Oh, my master, my master, the, 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 the army of the Syrians, and, and, and they're, they're surrounded about us. And, and, and the, Heard more and, of them. And, and the, the prophet gets up there and he says, Oh, as, as you said, there's, there's more to be with us than be with them. And... Uh, <laughs> servant you know one of the, one of the ministers goes into it we do we know goes into it well probably a lot of them but anyway goes into it and he goes start counting ten thousand twenty thousand you know uh one two <laughs> more and, of us <laughs> and the prophet says open his eyes and, and let him see lord and and it says immediately his eyes were opened and and around about elijah not around about the city but around about the man of god it says were Horses and chariots of fire. Not just one or two. Not just one or two. They were they were totally you know the 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 army that thought they were surrounding were surrounded, <laughs> but they couldn't see it. They didn't realize it. The the servant didn't realize it. The prophet didn't realize it. Uh, but we have angels, demons. We have we have all of these spiritual things around about us, all the time. Yeah. And 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 we are. We, we have to overcome, just as I to go about my day, I have to overcome gravity, I have to come o- overcome the atmospheric pressure, I have to co- overcome all of these other things that are on there. Uh, I, I have to, 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 to make it work. Uh, 
I have to overcome these spiritual forces. And the only way to overcome them sufficiently, effectively, is by the Word of God. It's the, the Word of God is the most important thing in the face of this earth. There again, the devil really isn't coming against me. He's not coming against no. you. He's not coming against the people, the, the, you people that are out there watching. The Word. He's coming against our Word. Our Word, which produces faith, is the thing that he's after. Now, he uses the situations and circumstances of sickness, disease, poverty, death, and all of these afflictions and persecutions, lots of other things. Right. He uses them to steal the Word. That's what we're seeing here. That's Jesus says the word that's sown that's important, and all of these other things come in uh, to to take away the devil and all his crew come immediately to steal the word. Didn't come to steal the soil, come to steal the word. And and he's he's always working. The devil is always working in everything. We need to remember that he's working to take my word. And when we have good ground, he can't steal the word because we're rooted and grounded. And I want to read this because this, and that's why I said earlier that. If we if our ground isn't very good, we need to import some ground to get it get, some get it good. Get some good ground. Get some good ground. Miracle grow ground. Yeah. Right. Get some good stuff. There, these are they that on good ground. So just hear the word now. Okay, uh, is that where we left off? Yes. Yeah. These are they on good ground. I'll put on my binoculars here. So okay. These are they on the good ground, such as hear the word, receive it, and bring forth fruit. The black ground along the river is so rich that just jumping for the chance to grow something. And I might add, if you've lived along a river and they've done some bulldozing or something and the ground is black and clean and everything, man, it doesn't take long and there's stuff growing. There's stuff coming up right mm -hmm. now. It doesn't wait. Poison ivy with leaves. Oh, wait a minute. Black ground on the river so rich that it's just waiting to grow. The poison ivy with leaves so big that they look like elephant deer grow on the islands in the Mississippi River. And I can vouch for that uh, personally because I've been there. They grew up like trees, six or seven foot tall, straight up out of the black ground without anything to climb on or support them. This is tremendously rich poison ivy because it's growing <laughs> in some of the richest, some of the best ground that ever existed. It's so strong and powerful that it grows straight up like a tree. We've all seen poison ivy climbing on trees in the timber. We've seen it in growing in little bushes. Uh, <clears throat> it has to have support because it's growing in very poor ground. It doesn't have the nutrients and moisture that plants growing in the rich black river soil do. Black soil is loose, soft, and can be crumbled so that the roots of the plant growing in it can grow and grow deeply, down, down deep in easily. Timber soil is hard clay and hard as cement in the, <laughs> this time of year. Mm -hmm, so yeah. the plant's roots have a very hard time growing and digging down in it. Water and nutrients for the plants growing in this type of soil are hard to come by, so they have to work very hard to grow there. Which type of soil or ground do we want to be? Good ground, such as hear the word and receive it, there is also an abundance of moisture in the good ground, the moisture being related to the Word of God. We relate moisture to the Holy Spirit. When we receive the Word and let the moisture and the water of the Word wash us, the water of the Holy Spirit come in and cleanse us, then the Word which we have received will grow in us. It will mature in us, and we will use our faith, and it will come forth with fruit, giving us 30, 60, and 100 fold return. When we take in the good Word and earn good soil, uh, the Holy Spirit is in us, and he's there to make sure that that word accomplishes that which is supposed to do. Because God said in his word, my word does not return void, but accomplishes that which pleases me. Well, who's the one that helps do that? The Holy Spirit that's living within you. When you speak God's word, the Holy Spirit is there to make sure that it's come to pass. Amen. And it may not come to pass in your time frame, but it will come to pass. But uh, And the devil's right there <laughs> wanting you to speak out weed seed so he can have his stuff come to pass because mm -hmm. the same principle works so it's either good or bad one or the other okay uh do you want to jump on any of that or should we move on to the next one which kind of winds this up uh let's go ahead and go on here, I think. and he said to them take heed what you hear for what measure you meet it shall be measured to you and you that hear shall more be given amen what we've been saying the same thing mark said same thing mark said listen to what you're hearing <laughs> take heed what you hear what does it mean oh i gotta watch my soap operas today i don't want to miss any of those episodes because then i won't know what's happening <laughs> mm -hmm. take heed what you hear if you are going to feed yourself that kind of junk then you cannot expect anything that is going to come forth out of your mouth which will when bad things start happening to you what's coming out of your mouth what are you speaking with 
the measure you meet, in other words, what measure you listen to the word spoken to you, good or bad, what is what will go in to your heart, what measure that you hear it, it shall be measured to you, and in, unto you that hear shall more be given. If you are feeding your spirit trash, it will start crying out to you, feed me the word of God. It doesn't want to hear the general hospital sickness and disease stories, lack financial crash, and the other kinds of trash. It wants to hear the word of God. If it isn't fed God's word, it will shrivel up like a prune or a praisin. <laughs> that's that's an analogy because uh, your spirit man's there, but it's not going to leave. Uh, if it leave, you die. Mm -hmm. But it, it does need to be fed and nurtured so that your spirit man and your soul realm can work together to accomplish that which pleases you. Like Ken and I have said many times, God has put you on earth for a task. You're a unique person. And we talked on that other programs, but you're unique. And, and God put you here for a reason. And there's things that you have to do that only you can do. That God put you here to accomplish a certain thing. And if you're not doing what these things, what we're talking about, mm -hmm. you won't accomplish what he's put you here to do. Okay. And, and you can't blame God. You can't blame the devil. It's your responsibility. Okay. There are those who are fathers, husbands that are the only father or husband that is going to be in that situation. I mean, yeah. you, you don't have many fathers. You know, Paul says that. He said, you have not many fathers. You know, I, I'm, I'm your spiritual father. But the same thing is true in, in this particular realm. Uh, we as, as, as husbands and fathers are, are, are made responsible to take the leadership in our families. Uh, and if we do not do that, there is no one else that can come in and, and effectively fill that gap. Uh, you know, it's like, you know, if, if my legs get cut off, uh, I can get in a wheelchair and I can roll around, but it's not near as, it's not nearly as effective as, as having my body operate and function and flow the way that it's supposed to. And that's the same, same thing is true with us. God has given us, um, rules and laws in the spirit the same way that there are rules and laws in the natural realm. We see rules and I, I know people say today that there's no absolute truth. But but there is absolute truth. Well, they're wrong. Uh, man, if, if, if there was no, I mean, it's uh, an absolute truth. Again, gravity is always here. Absolute. You know, I, I mean, it, it never goes away. You don't wake up in the morning on the ceiling. <laughs> you know, well, maybe some, you know, if you no, do, that's... if you, you need to get saved. Um, but uh, I know some people save and fill the Holy Ghost. Sometimes I think they're on the ceiling. But anyway, uh, all of this stuff... It, it, God has got a way for it to work. And it says that that, that that way for us to work is there so that we can be victorious in every, every, every situation. situation. Not half of them, not most of them. Every situation, we can be victorious. We can win every time. You know, it says fight the good fight of faith. Well, what's the good fight? A fight that you lose is never a good fight. So, <laughs> no. so if we're fighting the fight of faith, we're going to win every time. Uh, it says that he's made us to be more than conquerors. That's right. More than conquerors because he's already won the battle. We're just here to, to, to gather the spoils of his having won. We're you know? kind of an occupational force in a yeah. way. We're here, we're here to uh, reap the harvest of the battle that's already been fought. That's right. That's already been fought and won. And make sure that it stays that way. And make sure that it stays that way. Uh, that's where the church, I think, over the years has fell down. We've just backed off and let the devil and the minority crew take over and run things and now it's changing back the other way people are fed up with what's happened and, and a lot of these people are morally right that aren't necessarily christians but they, they're smart enough to see what's happening in in our society well what's going into them what's going to come out uh, well there again i know here in the last two minutes of the program is not the time to, to get into new no, new, not, new topics not open, i, I right. understand that but but tune in again in the, in the next program and we'll get into it more but but we uh, we are in a, a situation like i said where where we should always win every time we should win That's right. and and if, if we will if we will be in faith we will win but but most times we're not in faith. We're in the sense realm. Yep. We're in the soulish realm, and 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 we can never win in that realm. However, a lot of times you want to get there. You want to reach out and grab that little turkey by the nap of the <laughs> neck and 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 shake him a little bit, you know. But 
as, as soon as we do, as soon as we yield to that, we've lost. As soon as it gets to, uh, you know, uh, as soon as it comes, becomes a, a, a battle, actually, as soon as it becomes a battle, we've lost. So tune in again to the program, Great and Mighty Things. Yes.